Mark's Classic Rock, Q1043. Good morning. Uh, if you listen at all to Q104.3, you know that my cause is never forgetting 9-11 and never forgetting the ongoing number of victims of 9-11. And I read something interesting the other week in the Star Ledger, not even in a New York City newspaper, <laughs> that uterine cancer is not yet one of the 68 cancers presumed tied to the 9-11 dust, but that uterine cancer will most likely be added to the list in mid-year. Now, that got me in motion. I contacted my friends at Barish and McGarry, lawyers for the 9-11 community, and joining me there, one of the partners, Sarah, director, and also joining me this morning, I want to introduce you to Ronnie Kranis. She had worked for the New York State Department of Small Business Services. City. City. New, New York, York City. Yeah. City. I yes. apologize. Not Department of Small Not Business Services. So for six months, after September 11th, she was helping displaced business owners. And we remember how many business owners were displaced. So she's on the job. And if I understand correctly, Ronnie, you have suffered from 9-11 asthma. Very bad asthma. Very uh, bad asthma. COP I'm sorry. COPD, PTSD. Just go down the list and, and I fill the bill. And when were you diagnosed with uterine cancer? Um, the end of August of 2009, I was already in Sloan Kettering and being operated on on September 9th, 2009. Wow. And how are you now? How's your health now? Uh, I'm checked every three months. It's a, it's it's never going to be you know, you're you never are over cancer. You have survived cancer, but you are you never are cancer free. They tell you that you will you always have to be checked. And this is this is my life. Like my, my like my life with the pulmonologist and the gynecologist are exactly the same. And now heart and now a cardiologist. Okay. Now that <laughs> also yes. is a 9-11 illness that is not part of the list. And I have talked to a number of FDNY widows in particular, whose husbands or partners died very young, like 40 years old, suddenly dead of a heart attack. And there, are, and Sarah, you can jump in here. I have been told by these widows that there is evidence that the jet fuel is causing these heart attacks. But the argument is that FDNYers are more prone to get heart attacks because of the nature of the job. Sarah, where do we stand on both of these issues? Because it's just, it's a nightmare that just won't end. Well, and I've been told by, uh, I, I never wanted money from the Victims' Compensation Fund. That was not it. I just wanted my medications to be paid for because they're very costly. When I spoke to my doctor about the heart, it's purely ge genetic. It is not. There isn't anybody in my family. I mean, my brother went back to every relative from Eastern Europe. Nobody had a heart condition. My mother had angina. That was it. It had nothing to do with what I have. And, and when was that diagnosed? Time? When was that diagnosed? Your heart issue? That was diagnosed. It, well, it was, I was, it started out as a murmur and it, it, it more, more morphed into, um, I have to read the name of it. You'll have to, you have to bear with me. I'm not kidding. Um, but, but I, I mean, I never, ever had heart. I, I'm a runner. I was a runner. Um, it, it, this is insane. And then they tell me that, that it's, that it's uh, hypertrophic cardi cardiomyology. Now, is that Sarah, rare? When, is that rare? I don't. Apparently, it would have been rare if I got it when I was sixty, but I'm seventy-three. 
Sarah, um, so so where do we stand on these? Because we have the 68 cancers, but there is so much else apparently that is still not covered. Right, right. So Ronnie's story, unfortunately, is not a unique one in that she is a female first responder that gave her time and her health to the 9-11 community in the time the city needed it the most. And might and, I add that it was longer than six months, believe it or not. I could just, I just said six months. It was, we were there for almost a year. And the issue that the female 9-11 population is facing, not just female first responders, but also residents, office workers. Yes, teachers, yes. Is that we were grossly underrepresented <laughs> when the healthcare program first came into ex in existence, when the first medical studies were being performed to determine which cancers should be covered. So because the pool of women to do research on and to collect data from was so small, uterine and also endometrial cancer was left off the list. Now, these are basically the only reproductive organ cancers that are not on the list. Prostate cancer right. Is included. Right. Prostate, I mean, men are being ovarian. covered from top to bottom, and women are being totally ignored. And cancer does not discriminate. It no. does not care if you're male or female, if you're black or white, if you're a responder or, or survivor or resident. Right, right. And myself, my firm, we're remaining hopefully optimistic that uterine and endometrial cancer will be included in the list of 68 cancers to make it 69 by mid 2022. The studies have been done, the recommendations have been made to the healthcare program. The science is there. The hormone related cancer like uterine can develop after someone is exposed to endocrine disrupting chemicals including benzene. And benzene was found in the 9-11 toxins. Yes. And these endocrine disrupting chemicals have been linked to other reproductive cancers that have been covered. So people like Ronnie and hundreds, if not thousands of other female 9-11 community members are not getting treatment. They're not getting early detection. They're not getting insurance coverage and they're not getting compensation. It's so frustrating as a woman, myself in the 9-11 community, waiting for that other shoe to drop. When will an illness be discovered? And to know that because I am a female and I have a uterus that if I develop that cancer and I believe it's related God to forbid. Happen, God forbid, of course, I will be ignored. Yes, you will. So we're very, yep. we're very hopeful that it will be included and Barish McGarry advocates for the whole 9-11 community. And we certainly are advocating for the females within the community to have this cancer included. And what about heart attacks? What about heart issues? I, I probably field about two to three calls a day, every day, seven days a week with that question of relatives of who have lost loved ones, early age loved ones, to heart attacks and other heart illnesses. And again, it's a long process for a condition to be covered. So. But it's 20 years. Agreed. It's 20 years That's and people correct. are still getting sick. That's How correct. long does it take to connect the dots with the scientists, the researchers? Well, apparently 20 plus years. <laughs> Based on the medicine for uterine and endometrial alone, to me, I'm not a scientist, but I think this is a no brainer. It needs to be covered. It has to be covered. You can't leave this off the list. And if it's taken this long to cover a cancer that so blatantly is caused by the toxins, I'm not surprised that the heart hasn't been covered, but there is a push to have that included along with autoimmune diseases. There is a host of illnesses out there that the 9-11 community suffers and disproportionately affects women more than men. The autoimmune affects women more than men. 
So the more women that are included in the data, which unfortunately they weren't at the start of this, the more statistics we can look at to prove the connection. Well, here's one of the problems. One of the problems, the way I see it, is the government finally did the right thing and provided and offered the free health care for life in every state and the compensation if you're physically ill with a 9-11 designated yes. illness. And, and, then did, and then did nothing to right. reach out and find the victims. Right. So women are not right. represented in the World Trade Center health program the way they should be, or in the victim compensation fund, because the office workers, the people who worked in the World Trade Center, the food service industry, the right. women, they are not connecting the dots over Absolutely. the last 20 years. Everyone thinks it's the healthcare program and the victim compensation for, fund is for men in uniform, for our brave men that were in the FMY and right. However, plenty of women wear the uniform too. And when you think about first responders, it was also Red Cross, National Guard, people like Ronnie, they're considered first responders, but they don't see their story being played out on TV, on the news media, in news articles. They don't see themselves represented. So they don't connect the dots. And for all the, say, the students, my, myself, I was a law student on Worth Street when 9-11 happened. Right, I, that's right, home. that's right. People don't always stay in New York or the tri-state area after schooling. They move across the country. They move right. across the world. Right. They're right. not living with the 9-11 news cycle as we are. And nothing has been done to reach. Sarah. Actually, Gary tries to reach everybody. Sarah, how is your health? My health is uh, knock on one good. I get my skin checked uh, yearly basis. Skin cancer, the number one cancer related to the toxins. I have sinus issues because I was forced to breathe the same toxins the FDNY and NYP did when my school reopened two weeks after right. the attacks. Thank I you. Was told it's not written. Safe. Just like Ronnie was told the air was safe, just like everyone was told the air was safe. Thank you, Christy Todd Whitman. Yeah, one week after. One Thank week you, after Christy September, Todd she said the air right. was safe and it was not. And Ronnie, right. what else? My office you? was closed. Right. My office was closed for almost a month. We had to work from September 12th on. And I'll tell you something interesting that has nothing to do with this, but the Jewish holidays came out during that period of time that we went back to work and everybody else was home. Do you know that they charged us for the Jewish holidays? We were the only ones working and they charged us. They, 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 we, they told us we couldn't have the days off because it was imperative that we be there. And I'm sorry, I'm a, I may not be a religious Jew, but I'm traditional. And they charged us for the days. So that's just one of the many things where they, they absolutely were totally disrespectful. Ronnie, what else? We only have a couple minutes left. Yeah, what I'm else sorry. would you? No, no, don't be sorry. You make a very I don't valid to point. Diverse. But what else would you like listeners to know about your story? I, I would just like, I, I have been fighting for women for uterine cancer since they since they told me that it wasn't covered. I have, and you can ask Sarah will tell you. I have been fighting every step of the way. I, when, when I read newspapers, I no longer do. But when I read newspapers, I used to write to Voice of the People. I, I, I put myself out there for everything. I'm disgusted. I want uterine cancer covered. I would like this heart disease that I just developed to be, um, I, whether it's covered or not, I want it to be said that this is not genetic. This is from the World Trade Center, period. Okay, uh, and I, just, I implore, I implore, I'm sorry, we're, we're running no, out of no. time here. I implore yeah. anyone listening 
to spread the word. And even if you have questions about your health and you were below Canal Street right. the eight months after September 11th, I implore you to contact my friends at Barish and McGarry, 911victimfund.com, 911victimfund.com. The government is not doing its job in spreading the word that these programs are available. We have to do it for now to help the victims spread the word. You can do some good if you know someone whose health could possibly be impacted because the nightmare isn't over. And uh, I thank you both. And I will see you tomorrow morning. Thank you. On the Jim Kerr Rock and Roll Morning Show, Q104.3. Thank you. New York's Classic Rock, Q104.3.